Okay, the creature. Interesting looking board because of the contours. Obviously, it's got a very deep double concave and a double concave deck as well. So to begin with, I'll just talk about why the deck double. And the first thing is the grip. There's a significant, if not huge, increase in grip when you have narrower, tighter radius concaves as against a single concave, which is moderate in depth. And the reason being is that you get this uh, angle and I'll give you a quick sketch to look at it. I mean, if you're doing a turn and you've got a V bottom like this from the olden days, look at the angle here, it's dreadful. It's not the end of the world, but you know, when you start to hollow it out and create a, a double concave, then you have a marked improvement. So then we went to a concave and it went, wow, this is nice. Bit of a flat deck. And as you can see, now we're getting closer to 90 degrees. The board's at a certain angle, but you're actually digging the rail in quite radically. And if you want to come a tiny bit closer, Nancy, and then now if you go to a double concave, yes, I'm exaggerating it. Now you're getting it to actually hook in almost to the angle of what the fin is like. So really, this is where surfing has not been able to progress for probably decades because we've not increased the grip. Every single turn that's being done now, I would say, has been done to the same degree, plus or minus tiny percentages for the last 20 plus years. So this now will give an opportunity to get more grip down low on the, on the wave and high on the wave. And what that means is all the way through the turn, there's an increase in control and you get a feedback that says, I can do anything now. It's like putting wider tires on a, on a car with more power. Without the wider tires, the power is of no use. So this grip has been a, a missing element and many designers have tried to increase their grip. You can do things with fins or channels, but only concaves will give you an entire surface, an entire rail, which is now bedded deeply into the face of the wave. So the cross-sectional aspect is the first thing that you can identify with. So when you're thinking about the grip, it's like side on, you can, you can get an you can imagine how much more that's going to hold onto the base of the wave than that. This just drifts out and slides. That's better, which is flat. Concave is better. Single concave is better than flat. And then this is markedly better than all of them. Okay, so that's the grip aspect. What's happening also is that as this concave is cut through the rocker and you've smoothened the rocker where the concave is at its deepest, you're actually increasing lift at the same point. How you do that is critical. How you shape that in, how you design it in, is really important. Because if you don't match the increase in grip with the increase in lift, then you get a problem. Either too much grip and it'll overbury, or too much lift and it'll skip out. So there's a balance there. Um, really, okay, look, I can get off the, the planning aspect, but that's one of the hidden things in it, is the, the change to the rocker that happens as a result of the double concave is where there's a slightly smaller sweet spot for the first time. I tended for the last 20 or more years to want to blend the crap out of everything. Now I've realized that you can put these tiny little graduated little, it's not even a flat spot, but it's a slightly lesser rocker between the feet where the concave is at its deepest. Okay, go to the deck, double concave deck. What that means is at these points here where your foot is arched over this center kind of spine, is about an inch uh, thick. This is beautiful. That means your heel and your toe, heels and toes, will both be feeling much closer to, to the water and mu much closer to that high grip angle that we've got here on the inside rail. So not only does it give you this nice feeling of getting closer to the water, but physically it's quite interesting as a side effect, and I didn't really plan on this bit, was that the, your foot is wrapped over this center spine and that gives you a, a certain level of certainty a certain level of certainty but seriously that feels absolutely beautiful it feels like what we should have always been riding okay and then lastly this is a more obscure aspect to it and it's a byproduct and it wasn't a planned on thing but um, I did realize in doing these things that when the more you contour the deck with double concaves the more you are actually stiffening the, the nose to tail flex. So if I look, show you the rocker now, 
because I'll go back to cross section, you've got this wobble like this, which is two little half eggshells and a beam in the middle, that is definitely going to stiffen the flex longitudinally uh, from nose to tail. But guess what's happening at the same time? You're actually allowing it to twist. So this has been a, a big jump in the actual flex pattern alteration that happened as a byproduct. Got to admit, not planned. But that means you don't get that twitchy thing that happens when boards are a little bit too flexy nose to tail. They go down and it's like you can feel every single thing that's going on. Now you don't want it to be too dull either. But this is the perfect balance as far as I can tell between stiffening the nose to tail flex and allowing a torsional twist through the whole body of the board. Anyway, I think that's about it. Um, Kelly did one of the best turns I think I've ever seen done. That's just in a sequence. And watching the video of him surfing on it, I don't think I've ever seen him as spontaneous and free with as much power. So I think um, if he's jumped up a level because of a board, then that's got to be a good sign or something. I don't think it's just Kelly having a good day because he's not competing anymore or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, thank you.